With love letters, I offer unadulterated, heartfelt gratitude to the writers, actors, comedians, and artists of all variety who have made this world richer through the light of their brilliance. Love Letters is a way for me to say thank you to these luminaries, to honor what is best in us all, and to shine a light on the people who help us rise. I offer you love letters for all these reasons, but also for the simple reason that this world is too free with critique and too stingy with compliment. And now, my 13th love letter, a letter for Florence Pugh. Dear Florence Pugh, thank you for all the loveliness you have created with so many characters, but all that follows is for your Catherine in Lady Macbeth. Thank you for facing the wall, for the way you stood naked, alone and untouched, face in profile and recognizing his impotence. Thank you for the tension in your body when hair brushing was violence, for things shuttered and then opening, and for your hand on a banister and slow, inevitable descent. Thank you for your stillness, a blue dress on a yellow couch, controlled rage and head bowed, for a face rigid, voice swallowed but resonant, for looking and longing, a woman shut out. Thank you for ragged breathing when corseted, for submission and refusal to submit, for the repressed rage of something hemmed in, something caged, and for your confident striding across untamed landscapes when escaping the prison of the house. Thank you for eating small bits of food at the table, graceful hands and hard, careful teeth. Thank you for your small smiles, repelling and inviting, and for your bearing, imperious and often pitiless, a voice clipped taught, but with the full knowledge of your right to full breathing. Thank you for flesh and passion, for flouting and unleashing, for dominance and challenging, for frustration and open-throated demanding. Thank you for picking at fingernails and every small action that externalized the tempest within. Thank you for the word, sir, dripping from your mouth with perfect condescension and disdain so pure, like liquid insult in amber. Thank you for the small talk you made at the table, voice brusque, as the man you had poisoned, gasped and choked and died behind the door, your movements like a dance at the table, the double spoon tap on the rim of your teacup, your face, one of waiting and calm and no regret. Thank you for eye for eye and tooth for tooth. Cruelty begets cruelty and for capturing so achingly what is lost of humanity when you've been stripped of your own for too long. Thank you for your voice, dark, raspy and amused for wanting and wantonness and selfishness and yearning and rage and freedom and all of it right and all of it gone so wrong in the end. Thank you for a performance of restraint and explosiveness where every motion and aspect of stillness counts so profoundly for an inhabiting of character that went to the cross, the prison, the grave and the sky with the delivery of nuanced insolence and power and silence and bound things untied. Thank you for mastery and claiming what you wanted and for drinking all the wine. Thank you for coldness pitched low and threatening and for sounds of freedom deep in your throat as you bludgeoned your husband to death. I stood up off my couch at that moment and applauded in spontaneous 
ovation. Thank you for your breathless breathing as you half buried a dead horse, for your gaze of knowing as you recognized your pregnancy in the mirror, and for the truth in your voice as you said, I will do anything to pull Sebastian into the house again. Thank you for your downward gaze at Teddy, the small, innocent boy on the couch, and you, a force of death, holding a pillow over his face, smothering a child so you could live again with a man in the house. Thank you for inhabiting passion and murder, the unthinkable, the intolerable, the unpalatable, the wicked, the wounded, the twisted, and animal. Thank you for finding the depths and for portraying so beautifully and so horrifically what is inhuman and painfully human when we're willing to murder the innocent to achieve desired ends. Thank you for your commitment to character so fiercely winning that when you killed Teddy, even though I recoiled at the killing, there was still a small part of me that wanted you to win. Well done, lady. Well done. Thank you for that last painful scene, sitting on the couch again, a woman empty and full, wounded, alone, but head of house and her own master, haughty and fallen, and with the mad pride of the broken, and for your eyes that said without saying, it is done. With immense gratitude for inhabiting Catherine in such a way as to make us all question what is imprisonment and what is release, what price is too gruesome, what humanity is traded to buy freedom, and when does freedom become its own prison? Thank you, Florence Pugh. All my best, Sarah D. Little. Up next, John Bronson. <laughs>